I have received the feedback that students of law, and especially the law students who have opted the subject of land laws are facing a lot of difficulty in understanding the laws. It is a very simple subject and if you correlate this subject with your day-to-day -day life, you can easily understand each and every aspect of the subject of land law. Now, one is a very prominent question which is raised by the students. I am not going to practice or I am not going to litigation in the district courts or in the high court. So I don't need to study this subject of land laws. Other says I am going to the corporate field. I don't need this subject. Other says I am only exclusively practice on the company, on the company law. So I don't need this subject. To my understanding, this impression is not correct. In fact, if you don't know the basics of land laws, you cannot survive in either of these fields. You may say why? Just take an example of company law. If you are a company law expert, company law consultant, company has some industry, company has some office. And where that office will situate, where that company will establish that industry, on the land. And then you have to prepare their documents in consonance with the, suppose you have to advise them for purchase of land to establish an industry by an incorporated company, how will you deal? If you understand, you may say, we can take the help of an expert. Yes, perfectly right. You can take the help of the expert but you have to verify those expert advices also being an expert in legal field. Similarly, in case of other fields, everything revolves around the land, corporate culture, acquisitions. You, you have to examine how much land one company is owning, how much assets the company is owning, what is their value, how can you examine from the revenue record whether those claims of a company are correct or not as per their documentation. So in any field, whenever, wherever you want to go, land law will not become an alien subject, but a integral part of your practice in any field, right? So this is my view, I may be wrong, but this is my view. Now coming to the understanding of the subject of land law. You, you are well aware, a particular chunk of land, take an example, we are here in Chandigarh. Chandigarh is built on a agriculture land or we can say a land belonging to the farmers. This land is maintained, the record pertaining to this land is maintained by the revenue officials. If you open an account in the bank and from the bank account, we, we came to know or we are aware of the fact that this account number belongs to A whose father's name is this, his PAN number is this, his branch of bank is this, name of the bank is this, situated in this particular area, the nature of the account is saving or current or demat. So by knowing a particular account, we may trace the complete details of the account holder. Similarly, so now the bank is maintaining that to ascertain this account belongs to a particular individual or a legal entity. Similarly, for this land, the accounts are being maintained. The accounts are being maintained so that we can ascertain 
which particular part or chunk of the land belongs to which person. Now in Chandigarh, is divided into sectors. And each sector, there are, suppose, a showrooms. And if there is one SEO, you just go to the website of the Chandigarh Housing Board. You'll get the complete information from the SEO number, from the house number, that who are the owners, who have been, who have been allotted this land of uh, showroom, who has constructed it, whether this owner whom, to whom this land of a house or a showroom was allotted has sold it to someone else, their details. So you can get the complete details. Similarly, regarding the agriculture land, the complete record is maintained. Nomenclature is different. That's why we are facing a little difficulty that we are not accustomed to those those uh, nomenclature. Now, in case of agriculture land, the account holder is the owner or the possessor or both. In my one of the video, I have explained how this whole process is being done. You may watch that. I'll give the link of that video in the description box. I'm not going into detail. Uh, in this video. Now, I am now specifically going for and discussing with you how to understand the Punjab Land Revenue Act 1887. This act was enacted in the year 1887 and what it shows, Land Revenue Act, meaning thereby there is a land and there is a revenue also. Now this particular land revenue act, we can say one, it prescribes the authorities who are dealing with the provisions or the rights or the duties or the actions to be taken under the act. These are the authorities. Then the grievance and addressal civil system before the authorities, where the appeal lies, where the revision lies, what is the period of limitation. Third is how to make a maintain a record in the shape of record of rights, etc. This act prescribes us how to maintain the records of the land. What are the main documents and how they are maintained is prescribed under this act. Fourth is land revenue. Now, as you know, suppose you have a property in urban area, you have to pay property tax. Similarly, even during British times, if you are owning a land, you have to pay the land revenue. The government charges the land revenue for providing you the water, for providing you the passages, whatever it may be, for maintaining your records also. So they are charging land revenue. Then if someone is not paying the land revenue, suppose a land revenue is assessed, someone is not paying the land revenue, then this act provides processes, modes for recovery of that land revenue. Here I'll, I'll just explain another, I'll give you another example. Suppose you are practicing under a company law, you are practicing under any other corporate law, you are practicing regarding a cooperative law. There are certain loans and the act has a specific provision that these loans can be recovered by way of, these loans are declared as land revenue and can be recovered as a process of recovery of areas of land revenue. So these provisions are applicable there, right? Then, then there, is a, there is a land, it may have one, more than one owners, sorry, more than one owners, 
and if they want to get their land partitioned, what is the process? Who can move an application for partition? Before whom they can move an application for partition? And what is the process of that partition? It is also prescribed under this act. That's it. So Land Revenue Act 1887 gives us the glimpses of this, provides us the provisions to govern all these aspects. Authorities, grievance redressal system, how to maintain the records of the land, what are the major documents, what are the processes, then what is the land revenue, and if the person who is liable to pay the land revenue fail to pay the land revenue, it shall be declared as areas of land revenue, then it, this act provides areas of uh, how to recover the areas of land revenue, those processes have been prescribed and if it is a joint land and the owners have decided to get it partitioned for their own respective shares, then how can they apply, before whom they can apply and what is the process of partition and finally how that partition is to be executed. This is all prescribed under the Land Revenue Act. Thank you very much.